And joining me now is Tom Barrett, the mayor of Milwaukee. Mayor Barrett, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to be here. So talk a little bit about what Milwaukee does to take advantage of, I think, the economic opportunity of the Great Lakes. Well, Milwaukee's put together a water council, and it's a lot of businesses in the Milwaukee area that have gotten together. It's probably 120 to 150 water technology businesses. Um, that are located there and they made the decision and, and we work with them now but this was really private sector driven um, to as I describe it lead their long suit because mm -hmm. let's face it here in the Great Lakes um, the Great Lakes are part of our history our economy our heritage our uh, certainly our recreation and we might as well exploit in a positive way those mm -hmm. assets because there are many parts of the country many parts of the world that don't have it so so what what they are actively doing is they're promoting themselves and promoting the region as a place where water technology uh, is really a cutting-edge industry and it, and it is and there are companies uh, you can think of things like beer. Beer is a water technology mm -hmm. industry, um, but it's it's also controls for for water heaters. It's it's different type of of water technology that's used there. And so what we're really trying to do is we're trying to position ourselves uh, as a place where water technology interest can come and either buy things from us, quite honestly, or, or locate there. And I think the same concept would apply to Michigan. How long has that Water Council been in place? It's been in place for several years, uh, and it's done a, a great job of promoting itself. We've been recognized as a UN compact city because of our water technology. Um, we've worked very, very closely with industries around the country that, that are trying to develop more water technology expertise. Um, and it's, it's really something that we're, we're very, very proud of. So Milwaukee is leading the way in, in this facet. Have you heard from other cities saying, hey, what are you doing here? And can we find out a little bit about this? And how come we can't take advantage of this as well? Well, not surprisingly, Chicago, of right, course, right. has come <laughs> in. And, knocking and, on your door. And knocking on your door and say, well, we want to do it. We want to become the number one city. Uh, but we feel, all right, we'll compete against you. And we'll compete against any city. Because I think what you'll find, and you'll find that here in Michigan as well, you have a lot of industries that grew up because of our, our proximity to the Great Lakes. And, and let's use that expertise. Because I really do think, as we move to the future, the fact that we have the water here is going to be a great, great strength and asset for us because there are regions of this country that, that their economic growth is going to be hampered because they don't have that access to fresh water. It definitely is an asset having the Great Lakes in, in this region. What would you say are some of your largest concerns facing the Great Lakes right now that we need to start addressing? <laughs> well, invasive species, and that's, that's something that we've just had a, a long conversation about, the Asian carp and mm -hmm. what's happening there because we don't want to upset the, the recreational fishing industries that we have in the lake um, and the, the Asian carp we don't know how big a threat that will ultimately be but we know that if it, it gets into Lake Michigan it's going to be huge um, and so so we have to be careful about that the ballast water issues are still um, because of the, the potential for delivering invasive species that way is a concern um, and then there are the diversion issues that are that are real and we have to make sure as stewards of the Great Lakes that we do everything we can to preserve them for future generations. You have a diversion issue that's playing out right now in, in your area, and I want to talk about that in a minute, but talking a little bit about in aquatic invasive species, you said something that I picked up on. You said, you know what, we all have to get on the same page. And while we can talk about this from um, a biology standpoint, from a scientific standpoint, there's a massive political standpoint on this in terms of making sure that everyone in the basin is, is, on, is on the same page. Do you find that that is true when it comes to Asian carp? Well, I think on Asian carp, the, the, the real issue is going to be, will we separate uh, the, the Great Lakes Basin from, from the Mississippi Basin? And, and right now we've got the electric barriers. Are those enough or are we going to make this investment? And if that investment is made, who pays for it? That's going to be the huge issue. Is it, is it a Chicago issue? Is it an Illinois issue? Is it a Great Lakes issue? Or is it a federal issue? I think ultimately it's going to be some sort of division among the four. But, but, but clearly that, that is going to be the, the big issue in terms of, of where we are right now with Asian carp. But, but moving forward, I, I think that the ballast water issue is, one, is an example of where initially we weren't all singing out of the same hymnal. And you had states with different standards. And that had an in economic impact because you had shippers who would say, well, wait a minute, if your standard in Wisconsin is one thing, your standard in Minnesota is a different thing, we're going to Minnesota. We're going to go wherever the standard is best for us. Right, right. And so ultimately, with the help of the federal government, the Coast Guard, we now have the same standard. So we, we have to make sure we have the same standards. So as the mayor of Milwaukee, have you found yourself in political circles um, coming together with more people in, in terms of Great Lakes issues that this is more, it's higher on your agenda of things to talk about? When I became mayor, I never thought I'd be involved in 
in these Great Lakes issues, mm -hmm. but, but I have been involved in it. And I've been involved in it because it's important for my economy. It's important for, for recreation in my community. Um, and, and I think it's an important issue for this entire region. I, I, I speak proudly of being from America's fresh coast because I think that that's really who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what I have found is there are a lot of cities that have been involved. I'm in the Great Lakes Mayor's Group, and uh, we have a lot of mayors around the Great Lakes because all of us, all of the cities uh, around the Great Lakes, we were formed because of our proximity to the Great Lakes. And so we all have something very, very much in common, and that's making sure that we've got this great resource and we're doing everything we can to not only utilize it right now, but preserve it for the future. Yeah, you, uh, a resource that affects millions of people, eight states, two provinces of Canada. Another huge issue is water usage and where that water goes. And I know that you have an issue happening right in your neighborhood. In right my now. backyard. In your backyard. Is it in Waukesha? Talk about what that issue is in terms of water diversion how and how that's playing out. Well, this is probably going to be the first diversion issue, major diversion issue under the Great Lakes Compact. And, and so right now the debate that's occurring is is whether this is a region that is only within the city of Waukesha or whether it goes beyond the city of Waukesha. Um, as the mayor of Milwaukee, if they're going to purchase water, not surprisingly, I want to sell it to them because I have excess capacity. But I have to make sure that whatever is done is done within the contours of the Great Lakes Compact. And that's what the political debate is going on in Wisconsin right now. Because we have a different concept in Wisconsin, a water supply area. That's a phrase that's not used in the compact. So it encompasses an area larger than the city of Waukesha. It's going to be up to the other eight, the other seven Great Lakes governors to decide whether that meets the, the, the definition of, of what a diversion can be allowed under the Great Lakes Compact. It's going to be potentially a hot political issue. And they all have to agree. All, all of the governors eight. have to stamp all off eight. on this. All eight. And so what could happen is you could have governors who are saying, well, look, this does not meet the definition or the contours of the compact. We're going to send it back till you get it right. Um, but I, I don't know the answer. And, and I think that that's, that's, is this compact, is it based on, on municipalities, on communities, or is this water service supply area something that meets the definition? And that, that is not an answered question. At this and point. it could eventually end up being a case study for other areas that if it is then allowed there, then you could start seeing different things playing out. And I think, that's why, this, I think that's why people are looking at it so carefully because the stakes are so high. Have you noticed that people have taken um, a, a bigger interest in Great Lakes issues? Uh, I think that there is a group of people that are constantly interested in it. They, they love it. Um, but I think that what we're seeing now, again, because of water wars in other parts of the country, uh, I think more and more people are recognizing that we're blessed to live in such close proximity to 20% of the world's surface water supply. Mm -hmm. Again, at a time when you go to Georgia, you go to, you go to Nevada, you go to other states, and they're trying to figure out what to do, we, we have it here. We just have to make sure that we use it appropriately. Mayor Tom Barrett from Milwaukee, thanks so much for joining right, thank us. You. It's we great appreciate to be here. it. Okay.